Alright, I'm gonna reset Viego. I don't want to be in three health and vulnerable. That looks better. Now, new Viego puts a new encroaching shadow. That thing puts in an encroaching shadow. The old 2120 Viego. And welcome, everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Viego Control, which is going to be our next deck. This is Freljord Viego playing a um, lot of control stuff, you know, like avalanches, ice shards, that kind of stuff. We'll have Avaros and Sentry for an early blocker, kind of like Tavern Keeper, Heal in our Nexus. So, you know, kind of playing similar style as like old school, like Brahma Nivea or like a Nivea control decks. But we're focusing on Viego, because Viego is incredibly powerful. So we're going to have our three Viegos, our two Hydrovines. Those are going to be our top end. Babbling Bjerg will be drawn Viego and Hydrovine, and we'll have Entreat that will be able to draw Viego as well. Um, I could definitely see playing this deck with Braum and having it be Braum Viego, kind of like Braum and Ivia. But I'm not, not playing it with Braum here, because also kind of thinking of if I have a... Uh, seasonal tournament lineup. I could maybe play this deck with a different Braum deck because I like playing Braum a lot, like the like the Soraka Braum. So I want to try this out uh, with Viego on its own, and you know, so we have the Entreat that will draw Viego. So uh, I have one Howling Abyss as just my other extra win con. This could um, just basically because I like Howling Abyss a lot. Uh, it's not necessarily better than other options. You could definitely be uh, other options. It could be the, the third Hydrovine. You can just play three Hydrovine and three Viego. You can play an Atrocity to try to help uh, win races by just having, you know, Atrocity for the late game. You can play a Rekindler. They can bring back a dead Viego. Or Harrowing. They could bring back some Viegos as well. Those are all pretty good options there for this one-up slot. Also, maybe playing a second Chronicler of Ruin or its Spirit Leech. Uh, could be some other good things you could do if you want just like another four mana unit. Those are some good ones. So some other options, but I like Howling Abyss a lot. So I'm playing Howling Abyss because I can. All right, but let's get to it. Let's go ahead and have some fun here with this Viego control. And let's see if we can uh, harness the power of Viego. Most, it's not every case, of course, but most times that I win a game with Atrocity, I feel like I could just win the game without Atrocity just fine. And there are a lot of games where you'll mulligan, you'll draw Atrocity early, and it's just stuck in your hand, and, and you have one less card, and you lose the game because you have one less card. I've lost many more games because of Atrocity than I've won because of it. And so I just don't, I don't care for the card in this kind of deck. Because <clears throat> this kind of control deck, you're not really, you're like, this deck is not designed to, like, do other Nexus damage, right? Like, this is a, a control deck. We're not trying to sit back and do a bunch of Nexus damage. Like, it's better in a, in a deck like Thresh Nasus, where you are an aggressive deck that's, you know, putting out a lot of power right away that's attacking, and then the Atrocity is, is more valuable at finishing the game in that style of deck. I don't need rules to know good from bad. Hmm. That's a lot of Glimpse Beyonds. Kind of wish I mulliganed that first Glimpse Beyond right about now. I, I wouldn't use that same logic for... I would not use that same logic for Vengeance. Vengeance... Um, has helped me win a lot more games than what it's lost because Vengeance has been a, a spell that you can play a lot earlier, a spell with the interaction. I, I would not say that that's just the same logic for um, Vengeance. And I just don't really... I know I, like, I could have had a good attack with the Soldier, but like I, don't, I just don't really want to just attack with Soldier. They block with the 2-2, two -two, and then it has 2, and then I don't get to block this very well. All right, so I, I was planning on, on, you know, like, blocking and having them use a spell and kill my soldier, but now that I drew the Chronicler of Ruin, that's no longer the case. Up there in the mountains. All right, 
Okay, Hydrovine. That could definitely be way too early for using that card. We'll have to see. I do not break rules. I bend them slightly. These old eyes still see far and clear. You gotta believe me. Don't love my hand. Of card draw, card draw, card draw, and units. When they're gonna have like these champions that are attacking and all the combat tricks and everything, this is not a time to have only card draw. You cannot run from absolute Very scared of Ruin Runner. Oh, they're a Talia deck, not Sivir. Light is our sword, her warmth, our armor. Yeah. Yeah, we're in danger. We're in danger. So I got the troll. The troll chant was a good draw. Definitely really like that as a draw. That was a very good draw. Hoping they can't save both. Yeah, my plan's turtle up behind a Hydra Vine next round. That's kind of the plan. Okay. Two, sh two shape stones. Seven mana? That's cool. I was thinking about attacking, but once they, they're like, now nah, I'm just gonna waste seven mana, then never mind. Good, no Talia to copy this Warlord's Horde. Please no Absolvers for Overwhelm. Just let this happen. No. Fate is what I make. That's eight. Ah, alert the villain. Not the worst. Uh, I even thought about that, but thought, now they probably don't have the third action. Never mind, you have to do. That was bad. I shouldn't have played the Viego right there. I would ideally like to play one of these soldiers on their attack round before they attack. Ideally. I, I want to play the Howling Abyss right now. If I play the Howling Abyss, I have three blockers next round. I'll have... And so basically, I would have like the soldier plus the encroaching mist that we create. It's not nearly as safe as playing like Sentry or Feast.
Wow. Yeah. Okay. So we probably gotta be a little bit more safe. Tavern Keeper, good. Border from here. Yep. Especially with how that round went, then turned it the abyss turned into being too greedy, unfortunately. Rolling sands are a little bit of a problem. I don't want to like play any of these yeah, I guess I'm just passing. Like I don't I don't want to play any of these things and like have it get roiling sands. Like, have them have big overwhelm on like my small one one or two one or something. That's right. Run. Let's talk about your plan. Ready the torches. Alright, that's the absolver. This turns into nine overwhelm. I go down to one. Not dead yet. Okay. That's good, that's good. Now playing this, get rid of the roiling sands. this are good. Viego. The whole world will know my anguish. Viego's probably pretty good. So the Viego definitely levels up this round. I will not be made to wait. Arda's gonna make a meal of them. I mean, I guess assuming this resolves. I command you. Hmm. Man, I can't. I can't imagine they're gonna kill my Viego. Right? Like, I feel like it's a safe to attack with it. Hopefully I'm not wrong. If they have triple, like, plus three, plus one, it still doesn't kill it. Oh, hush. Never mind, they, they could just play hush. They're Targon. Never mind, hush. I should not attack with it. Yeah, I shouldn't have attacked with it. Because of Hush. The Shadow Isles are just the beginning. Viego would have killed that other unit at the beginning of the round anyway. But I do like getting I do like that we just got the ground slam out of their hand, but yeah, I, I can't imagine that we lose this now with this. Especially with the flash free spirit journey. Overwhelm plus stun. Yeah, let's let's get let's bust up the spell shield then. The problem is this one one's in the way. They've already played multiple ground slams. Yeah, they played multiple ground slams so far. Let me just do this. 
I'm not worried about the spirit journey, because this, this one wants in the way for my spirit journey. I'm going to reset Viego. I don't want to being three health and vulnerable. That looks better. Now new Viego puts a new encroaching shadow. That thing puts in an encroaching shadow. The old 2120 Viego. Got him. All right. VAO control, 1 and 0. Without her, there is only darkness. Yeah, both their ground slams they used pretty early. We got some deep. Deep can be tough. We're going to be playing like just a, a real long, slow game. I bet deep could be kind of tough for us. They just end up with a bunch of Nautilus. There you go. There we go. Sea Scarab's mini Maokai. Give me the stuff! Stuff make happy! <laughs> so I'm just gonna go Soldier Soldier Viego. That sounds like a good curve. But yeah, they are going deep fast. Wow. And now whenever. All their stuff dies, like with the Sea Scarab. Yeah, this is... This is problematic. This is problematic. She waits for me beyond the mist, my queen. They didn't block the old one. Wow. And each each one of these is just a jettison. Oh man, even better than jettison. Each one is gonna toss five. They just toss the, their entire deck. Yeah, they just toss everything. Yeah, I don't I don't like our chances of winning this. Like Maokai's gonna be leveled up. I don't think we're winning this. That has them toss a bunch more. Hopefully draw another Viego. We have two Viego, one Hydrovine left in the deck. Oh, so two out of three chance to draw Viego. I want to draw another Viego so that... Um, okay, so another... Okay. You need to draw another Viego so that if they, you know, take away my deck, 
I had the back of Diego to put another card back on in the deck. So that was really unlucky, right? We had we had three cards the Battling Beer could draw. Diego, Diego, or Hydrovine. And unfortunately we drew the Hydrovine. Wonderful hand for the opponent. You know, sometimes you just gotta give it up to your opponent. It's a great game. You, they deserve this win for sure. That was very impressive. So they should only have champions left. Yep. That's all they have left in their deck are just three champions. Ooh, Vengeance could be good. Could it be good? Because basically, like, the Vengeance is good against Nautilus. So I have to attack and kill them next round. Man, why can't I play Vengeance and other stuff? Do I need to kill this Maokai? If they're out there, I'll spot them. Yes, yeah, so that will shuffle the sea monsters back. Yeah, so the, this game turned on me not drawing my second Viego, and then they had, you know, that the two mana kill your Viego. Those are the two things that had them win this game. Is it even possible? I don't know what this can do for me. We could hit Zillion. Zillion go put four time bombs in our deck? I don't know. Oh, yeah, the sentry kills me, doesn't it? Right. Right, 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 right. What would you have? Yeah, sentry just kills me. Right. Or they do that. And we're not dead yet. Hmm. If I can get elusive and scout. Okay. <laughs> Not possible. Alright, good game. Yeah, that they deserve that one for sure. Alright, so how does our deck do against Pirate Burn? I think I kind of have to mulligan everything, I guess. Yeah, we gotta send it all back. There we go. Need our early blockers. Yeah, there are some champions that are much more fun to play than play against. Lee Sin, definitely one of those. 
this time. Playing against Lee Sin is just, you know, like when they have when they have Lee Sin plus a whole bunch of uh, spells and everything like that. It's just okay. I can see the game because you have no chance. But it's it's fun to completely dominate like that sometimes. And so yeah, I understand. I understand why people like playing Lee Sin. It's not an enjoyable champion to play against. That's for sure. So if I attack, they block with Grenadier. That just helps their Gangplank level up. So we shall await. If I'm forgotten, then no. You see me, yes? I take more overwhelm damage here, but I also get the blocker for the 3-2. Kindly Tavern Keeper is a play. This only affects summon. So if I so Chronicler of Ruin, the Tavern Keeper does not help me. This one's on the house. I'll shoot the wings off a bilge wasp. This will take the chill off. Doesn't mean I'm going to win this game just because we have three ta Kindly Tavern Keepers. Their hand's looking pretty strong. They're going to have... Um, yeah. Yeah, it does not necessarily mean we win this game. Yeah, and the reason why it can't be a summon is because you have to choose. And so you, you can't have it like a summon... Because summon affects... Just happen like automatically. Let's talk about your dad. Maybe it's better to take one more and get rid of the Corsair. What will you have? I'm not sure if that was the card that grabbed the spray fin or not. I don't know. That's gonna level up Gangplank. So it'll attack as a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, trade Hydrovine for it. Yeah, I'm gonna trade Hydrovine for Gangplank. Really bad. Are we dead. Looks like we're pretty dead. At least it didn't hit my Nexus. If it hit my Nexus, we were very dead. But... Down to four. 
I just felt like, you know, like we're so far behind. Obviously, it would have been nice to have like the other blocker with the Chronicler of Ruin in play, but I just felt like we have to get like this going because we're so far behind. And I don't, I don't know exactly what to hit, what can heal our Nexus, which champion. But all right, that's game. All right, double gangplank, got him there. Um, I, I was pretty happy how that how like our deck looked with how that played out, but for how that played out, I think we'd be pretty good. You know, like I you know like I didn't have a Viego, no Avalanche. You know, like there's there's a lot of cards that I didn't have. Of course, they didn't have Misfortune. But how that played out, I th I think that we would do pretty good in that. Yeah, you know, like this would have been a great hand <laughs> for that matchup. Still a good one for Draven Jinx though, so we'll keep it. They're gonna open attack. I guess I can ice shard plus foul feet to the open attack. Time for the main event. It's a Draven. It's Draven. Perfect. That's what I was hoping would happen. Now we got those, and then we go foul feast. Let's do this. And hope they don't have um, the card that keeps that alive. You know, the disc okay, the discard. Make it where it can't go below one health. They do not. Time for the main event. I don't want to attack him with the encroaching this and give them another spinning axe. Basically. Basically. I've seen some, yeah, sometimes Draven Jinx will play Survival Instincts. It's not real common, but it, it happens sometimes. Now we're cooking. Oh, so yeah, I guess I could have just attacked with the Camivore, and that's true. Yeah, I guess I should have just done that, yeah. Could've got three damage in with that, that's a good point. I will find her. Mm. If they're out there, I'll spot them. Rules are made to be broken. Like buildings. Or people. You should try blinking sometime. Oppose me and die! Mm. Warm hearts and hot soup. Well, I like that avalanche draw. That could be good. No, it's here okay, so with them getting rid of the spinning axes, that's going to be more difficult for them to level up Jinx. Whoa. I've got feet bigger than you. So I do have backup. I do have backup Viego in case this one dies. They could still kill. They can kill it with a get excited. Okay, that is what they needed to kill it. I probably should have. Honestly, I probably should have just frostbit the Jinx in response to that whirling death. Because the Jinx is the card that matters. The Draven doesn't matter.
doing this to get an extra encroaching mist for my next Viego. Yeah, so no nothing's died this round. I could glimpse, but it's still it's seven damage. It still kills the Viego. Oh, that would've been nice to have. Yeah, so I could have Avalanche, but so if I if I Avalanche, try to kill Jinx with Avalanche, then I feel like they could like play a bunch of like units afterwards, and I wouldn't have any. Yeah, I guess it just happens. Okay, they had another Jinx at hand, and I wouldn't have any blockers or anything like that, right? Like I wouldn't be able to play Viego also. Risky, because more more good excitus can kill the Viego. But we need to we need to draw some cards. All right, cool. This is a very good Chronicler of Ruin. Potentially a very good Chronicler of Ruin, depending on what they do. So the. The Viego level up resets, but let's get that eight health back over here, right? Like that's that's worth. So two Hydrovines, one Viego left in the deck for the Babbling Beard. Ooh, see, there's there is survival skills. They do have survival skills. How about that? How about that? Okay, so I am at... Still at a pretty healthy life total. I'll wait on this troll chant. Okay, cool. More blockers. Of course, what I really want is some way to kill this Jinx. Oh, I guess that Jinx is going to kill these blockers, isn't it? They should level up Viego and kill Jinx. Where's my axe? I salute you. And that's why I waited on these two. Viego should be able to close this out from here. Oh, wait, no, it's not going to kill the Jinx because that thing's bigger. Oh, wait. This isn't very good. This is not good. The people are my strength. But now we're just going to steal this crowd favorite again next round. The thing I don't like about playing the, the snap vine is that then I don't have very much of my other interaction available. We're already going to get an encroaching mist. Like, and also, like, if if I 
Okay, there we go. If I snap vine after that happens, so seven six. Uh, you know, like they, they would like this crowd favor would still be here. I wouldn't have room to get the encroaching miss with the snap vine, right? Like I wouldn't have had the room. So just like snap vine after that wouldn't have worked that well. You block there. You block there. Block, block. Take one, go to five. Okay. That's 17 right there. Oh, I can also just play this card. Beast of Kamahor! Well then. What science without a little risk? That could be a problem. I don't think they'll have Mystic Shot, but I don't want to risk it. You can still get it, you know, they can get excited the Viego, but alright, cool. Cause that's the thing about like like yeah you say freeze it and swing if they have get excited mystic shot I lose so I kind of have to play that the kindly tavern keeper Lulu Z this has been a popular deck today they're gonna have all the green glade duos I mean I want to like keep that combo but all right I should maybe keep. Three sisters for a flash freeze. No, let's just send it back. I, we we need avalanche and, and um, no, we need avalanche and the ice shard. You'll thank me later. I'll show you how it's done. Nothing escapes. All right, there's avalanche. Everything's better with company. Says you. Zed. They picked the wrong row. They'll never see me coming. Oh, sometimes an avalanche can be so good. <laughs> it can be so good sometimes. All right, nice win there. Three, two. It can be so good sometimes. Let's do one more. Okay, cool. Let's see how this does against really is here. Basically, do we draw <laughs> do we draw Avalanche or Okay, double soldier vile feast. Vile feast can be good against sparring student and green blade duo. That card's good. That card's good. That's pretty gross. So I don't know, should I should I try to vengeance this thing? It probably doesn't work. Welcome to the tipsy hour. Navori, formation. Maybe 
You know, Shave Stone and Twin Disciplines. I was gonna worry about that too. Maybe we should just block the soldier on the Aurelia. We're good down to plus three, plus four. Yeah, I had the mana do plus three, plus four. Yeah, I had the mana do plus three, plus four. Mind your form. Yeah, I should not fear even fear of the north. All right, good game, opponent. Don't have the cards to beat Aurelia double dies and spells. I don't have the hand to beat that. Let's see what Viego can do. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't you love the play pattern? With all the sand soldiers. Obviously, really will level up. With me. And then be able to move. I mean, they're both doing two damage to the Nexus. I'm not really scared of that 2-1. This is only doing one damage to Viego, though. That that can be a difference of having one less damage in on that Viego. Yay! Last round. In case of just, you know, Blade Dance and need to get this down, but an attack wouldn't have been bad either. And that's why I didn't want to just try to kill the Aurelia, because they could just have another Aurelia in hand, but I guess they have another Aurelia, that means they have that thing in hand. I'm glad we got another shape stone out of their hand for no reason. Like, what are, what are they doing putting the shape stone on the same thing and letting me frostbite like that? Like, they should spread out the wealth. So at least we got that out of their hand. Alright, good game. Fate cannot stop me. Nothing can. 
Aurelia with two of those landmarks, and then all spells to protect Aurelia. Yeah, that was good. That was really good. I did I did a couple of things in there. I, I made a couple of uh, misplays in there. Could have, could have had a better chance of killing the Aurelia. And, and the, the main one was that, that Fury of the North, right? I need to go with that Fury of the North. But, of course, they did have that extra Aurelia. Yeah, I, I did not put myself in the best position to win that game. So there we go. All right, so that's Viego Control ended with a 3-3. Three and three. I really liked how this felt, though. You know, I want to keep keep playing it and get some more practice in with it. But I did like how this one felt. I thought that there was a lot of good stuff going on. Still just figuring out, like, the right, the right number, the right cards, that kind of stuff. Could definitely see more Ice Shards. <laughs> you know, like, Ice Shards has, has looked really good. Howling Abyss, of course, didn't really look that good, or I, like, never really had a chance to do that. Like, the, the metagame's too fast. For that, I think I think we maybe have enough top end with just the Viegos and the Hydra Vines. It doesn't seem like we necessarily need that extra top end card with that Abyss. So maybe that could be another interaction spell like an Ice Shard or a The Box or something like that. Uh, so we'll keep working on it. But I liked how this felt. I liked how the Soraka Braum felt. Action Sivir, not as much. And even though Action Sivir had the best record, I guess, out of, out of the three, I think that was definitely the worst out of the three. Um, but, you know, that that's just how the games go. So, uh, we will uh, try out the next deck, Jarvan Shen, after this. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button and feel free to leave those comments and let me know what you think of Freljord Shadow Isles Control with Viego at the top end. Uh, got any ideas for any extra cards in here? Anything you would you would uh, want to replace with something else? I'm, I'm all ears. So, yeah, feel free to let me know. And if you try the deck out yourself, let me know how it goes for you so I can also get some more feedback with that so i can have some more information with with uh making it going forward but anyway that's going to be it here though for viego control so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you for the next video